Hey all, this is Darren. I know this is a travel channel normally, but I wanted to put this video up on YouTube because when I went to install the DI2 shifter and derailleur on my new Orbea Rise e-mountain bike, I couldn't find any information on how to do it. Um, I did find some and I'm going to actually go through this stuff. I'm not going to show you how to break down the bike, but I'm going to tell you exactly what I had to do to get the DI2 XT Shimano shifter and derailleur hooked up to my or 2025 Orbea Rise with the Shimano EP6 motor. I'll be right back. Hey, all, welcome to Fire and Water Travel Services. We specialize in affordable luxury and culinary adventures with all types of travel, including cruises, all inclusives, and any type of travel that you're looking for. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and make sure you like and subscribe and share this channel. All right, guys, so first of all, if you're not familiar with the DI2 system that uh, Shimano has, it does hook up with their Shimano. Uh, e-mountain bike motors very very well but it's not completely wireless you do have to have some wires that connect the shifter and the derailleur to the mountain bike motor the EP6 or the EP801 so first thing you have to do especially on my bike it had a combination brake lever and shifter that was attached to this uh, brake lever here and I had to remove the manual um, shifter and then install the DI2 shifter here so this is uh, just has its own um, clamp that goes on to your handlebars so I had to remove the uh, shifter that was attached to this which just kind of le leaves in a blank space over there um, so this is the XT Shimano XT and I think it is the um, 8150 12 so this is a 12 speed shifter and it goes with the 12 speed derailleur so just make sure that um, you're using it with the 12 speed um, cassette and the correct um, front uh, chain ring so you want to make sure you get the correct components for your bike if you're putting this on so if you've got an 11 speed get the 11 speed but if not get the uh, 12 speed and I believe like I said it's the 8150 both the shifter and the derailleur Okay, so this is the shifter. Like I said, it's an electronic shifting, so there's no derailleur cable, just the cable that goes and attaches to the um, mountain bike motor. But what you're going to do on this particular setup, since it is an e-bike and it already has a cable going to the controller for the e-bike motor over here, you got your cables that run through the handlebars for both this controller module and then the uh, derailleur. They're going to go through the handlebars and they're going to come out the front here. And you get this little junction box here. It's actually quite expensive for what it is. I think it was like 30 bucks for this junction box, which is just a little... It, your cables connect into one side here that connect from the derailleur or the uh, shifter and the control unit here on top and then this cable is the one that was already going to the um, engine or the motor so you really just need this junction to connect these two cables to this and that connects it to the cable going down to the motor so you don't have to run a wire through the battery um, area so you don't have to worry about that so you don't have to run another long wire down to the motor itself just the one through the handlebars for the shifter because you already have the one for the controller over there so for, with that save some time and, and frustration I'm sure since you don't have to um, run a cable all the way through the handlebars and then down through the battery area which 
on this particular bike, the, the battery is not really removable. Um, you can remove it, but it's not super easy. You gotta take the whole engine out and then remove the whole battery, and then try to run your cable. It's really easy to get your, uh, derail your cable out when you take your shifter off, your original manual shifter. You can just, once you get your uh, derailleur off, that cable can pretty much get pulled right back through the, uh, the, the body here and just pull it all out at once. When you get down to the installing the derailleur, you're going to have to drop the engine, uh, the motor, and I'm going to leave you a link on how to do that to another video somebody else did, but you do have to get that motor off to be able to install the derailleur. So first you just you remove your old derailleur, pull the cable out like I said, that's going to the shifter. It's going to leave you this hole that the original cable was through. You can run your new cable through that. You need at least an 800 millimeter, uh, 1000 millimeter or 1200 millimeter cable for that length to do that. And then it goes right through there. You can, there's a little shiv that the derailleur cable goes into. You can run it right through that and it comes right out into where the, where you drop your motor. So you're going to have to take off your chain ring, your cranks, um, the chain guard and all that to get the motor out. So it does take a little, um, a little bit to get that motor out. But once you get the motor, you just drop it. You don't have to do a whole lot with it. Plug in the cable once you get it run through from the derailleur and it plugs right into the motor. I'm going to leave you some pictures here from the manual, from the Blue Book manual that kind of show you the wiring and how to do this. So, all right, guys, so I'm going to show you some pages here from my Orbea Rise um, mountain bike. This is the complete manual, the Blue Book manual. Now, years, uh, as long as it has the Shimano EP6 or EP801, should be pretty much similar. This is just showing you how to route the cables, what kind of adapters you're going to need. If you have the Shimano uh, screen, you can actually use that for the junction box. You don't need to buy the separate uh, four-prong junction box if you have the um, screen computer already. But um, this should work for pretty much any mountain bike. But if you have the Orbea Rise 2025, um, any model, it should be on pages 72 to 79. That kind of tells you um, how to route the cables through how to attach them and all that. So once I got everything figured out, it didn't take long to do this. But as you're going to find out, once you get everything installed and put back together, that's just the start of your adventure and your odyssey. All right, I'll be right back. Because there's a couple different ways you can hook up the system. If you have the display, the Shimano display computer here, um, you can actually use that for a junction box instead of this, instead of getting that um, little uh, other junction box. You can actually plug both of the, your controller and your shifter into the display and that will actually run it down to the motor as well. So there's going to be two different ways to do it. If you don't have either of those, you can actually run a cable all the way through and down there but that's not going to be your easiest way at all to do it so once you get your motor dropped you can run your cable pretty much really simple you plug it into the empty slot where the cable goes put it all back together but that's not the last thing <laughs> unfortunately Shimano does not like it when people like us work on our own bikes so as soon as you get everything back installed you're going to turn it on and you're going to get an error message and it's going to be an E903 communication error and all that's saying is that you need to take your bike to a Shimano dealer and they need to call Shimano and reprogram your bike to accept the DI2 controller and shifter and derailleur. So 
it's simple to get it all put together it does take some effort to get that motor out but once you get everything installed you're gonna have to take it to the bike shop anyway usually they don't charge you a whole lot mine was under forty dollars to do it and all they do is they plug their the their controller into the charging outlet and they call Shimano get them on the phone they get in there and reprogram it to accept the DI2 system it really doesn't take a whole lot but you just can't do it yourself there's no way around it so it's up to you I got my components pretty cheap so I was able to install my components myself I did have to buy a special tool to get the um, chain ring off so of course you know all these bike manufacturers like to create their own special tools so you have to buy them but I was able to get a park tool that fits a couple different ones that actually fit that to get the chain ring off but other than that it was simple to get the everything dropped and loaded and put back on and it did work with the stock chain ring and cassette and chain so um, once I got it installed it works perfect but like I said you are gonna have to take it to your bike shop so they can get hook up into the system and get Shimano on the phone and then Shimano will go in and set it up to use the DI2 system but that's it guys hopefully this helps you out I couldn't find anything on this like I said um, when I was doing it myself so I had to kind of piece some stuff together from different kinds of uh, resources, including the blue book manual that I, I put in here as well. So, all right. Thanks for watching. Hope it helps you guys. Well, that's it, guys. Hope everything helps. I'm going to link down to all the parts I needed down below. Uh, and like I said, you're going to have to go to your LBS, your local bi uh, bike shop that's a Shimano dealer to get, uh, get them to program it um, no matter what. There's no way around that, but... If you want to install it yourself, you can always do that, or you can bring it to your shop and just have them install the stuff for you. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share to our travel channel here. Uh, and if you need anything uh, travel related, cruises, all inclusives, trips to Europe, let me know. Fire and water travel, like, subscribe, and share. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.